What is going on guys welcome back in this episode of the C programming tutorial series for beginners we're going to cover operators so let us get right into it. Alright so in the last video we talked about data types and variables today we talk about operators and as the name already suggests operators perform operations on operands. So maybe we have two values we want to add them together uh, we use an arithmetic operator for that the addition operator or maybe we have a variable and a value we want to assign that value to the variable we use an assignment operator the equal sign and we have a bunch of different operators and categories of operators so we're going to talk about those briefly today i want to keep this short and simple because i think most people that learn c will already know the basics of programming and operators so i don't want to talk about this for too long but i want to give you a good overview in most programming languages operators are very similar so let's get started with the basic structure again so we're going to start by including stdioh um let me just disable the copilot. Uh, we're going to create a main function again, and we're going to return zero in the end. Now let's start with the first category. It's a category that we already had. And uh, those are the assignment operators. So essentially, when you create a new variable, for example, int x, and we want to assign a value to x, uh, what we do is we use the assignment operator, the basic assignment operator, the equal sign, in order to get the value on the right and assign it to the, uh, in this case, variable on the left. So int x equals 10, for example, this is a basic assignment. We talked about this in the last video already. Now, this assignment operator can now be combined with um, many different operators. So for example, the next category that we're going to talk about are the arithmetic operators. So uh, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and so on. Those can all be combined with the assignment operators. So let's just jump into the second category. If I, for example, have something like, um, let's say I also have int y and y is 20. And then I want to have int z and z is essentially just x plus y. This x plus y is an addition and the plus is an operator, the addition operator. This is an arithmetic operator. Now we also have not just addition, we also have uh, now in this case, I should not define them as integers again, because we already have the variable, but I can also use a minus for subtraction, I can use a star for multiplication, and I can use a slash for division. So those are the four uh, very basic uh, arithmetic operators, we also have the modulo operator. So um, this is just a percent sign, this basically means give me the remainder of a division. So uh, when I divide, I don't know, um, 12 by uh, five, for example, I would get two as a result and two as a remainder because uh, 12 is not divisible by five, but I can uh, divide 10 by five, the result is two, and then I have two as a remainder. And this is what I get with the modulo operation. Uh, so those are the most basic arithmetic operators. Now I can take these and combine them with the assignment operators. So for example, um, I can also define, for example, z to be, I don't know, five. And if I now want to say something like z equals what z is right now times five, uh, which would be 25, I can also write this in a different way. So I can also say uh, z plus uh, or not plus times equals five. This line here, this thing here has the same functionality as this line here. So it's just a different way of writing this. And this is true for many different operators. So again, if I want to say z equals what z is right now plus 10, it's the same as saying z plus equals 10, and so on. And this does not only work with arithmetic operators, it also works with uh, bitwise operators, those are the operators that we're not really going to talk about, because they're quite um, I don't want to say they're necessarily advanced, but there's something that you usually don't use unless you go into something that's a bit more advanced. Um, to be honest, in none of my little side projects have I ever used bitwise operations. I have used them in a couple of videos to show you what they do, but I don't really use them. Uh, maybe in some sorting algorithms that are logarithmic, you use them just to, to divide by two, but essentially bitwise operators are something that you are not going to need quite often. So we're not going to talk about those today in too much detail. Um, but yeah, that's it for the arithmetic operators and the assignment operator. Again, the assignment operator can be combined with different operators. So just for an example here, uh, one of the bitwise operations would be an and, not two ends, just one and. And if I want to 
say something like z equals whatever z is and uh, logical int with eight, for example, I can also do this by saying int equals. So this is just a general rule here. If we have an operator that produces some uh, result, we can also use it in combination with the assignment operator. Uh, all right, so what we can also do is we can use um, comparison operators. So comparison operators, as the name already says, uh, those operators compare values. So if we have, for example, x and y, I can also go ahead and say print f. And in this case, I want to print percent d and backslash n. And what I want to print is the result of the statement x is less than y. Now, what is the result of the statement x is less than y? It is a Boolean value. So x is less than y is a comparison. This comparison can either return true or false. So it has to return a Boolean value. It cannot return five, it can only return yes or no. In this case, 10 is less than uh, 10 is less than 20. So x is less than y. So this thing would be true and true is represented by one. So we can go ahead now split the terminal, we can go uh, to the desktop, we can say GCC main C O main and then we can run this. And you can see that I get one as a result. Now, if I change this here from 10 to 30. Now the statement is 30 is less than 20. It's not true. So if I run this again, now first compile it, run it again, we can see that zero is the result. Now, if I set both to 20, we're also going to get zero, because the question is not less or equal to it's just less. So if I want to check for less or equal to what I have to do is I have to add an equal sign. So in this case, now NeoVim um, represents this as this in your case, it's going to be represented like that. So just less and equal. Uh, now my editor displays it as that it's just a style feature. So don't be confused by that. Um, and in this case, this would, uh, I think I didn't save it. This would return true as well because less or equal basically means they're equal or x is less than y. Now, if I only want to check for equality, what I have to do is I have to say equals equals. So two equal signs because one equal sign is the assignment operator Two equal signs are uh, a comparison. And in this case, this comparison returns true because 20 is 20. If I change this to 19. This is not going to be true anymore. As you can see, uh, what else can I do? I can also check for not equal. So if I want to see is x not equal to y, what I do is uh, I use this. Uh, in this case, again, new vim uh, displays it like that what I actually typed is exclamation mark and equals. So basically, this symbol here followed by this symbol here, and new vim just uh, displays it as as this here. So this checks is x something else than y. And if this is true, we get as a result a one if I set them both to 20 together. Uh, again, what happens is zero, because 20 is uh, equal to 20. So this statement is false. Uh, and of course, this can also be done with greater. So this would mean x is greater than y greater or equal to uh, and that's basically it. Now, these things, these comparison operators are very important when it comes to if statements and conditions that we're going to talk about in the next episodes. Uh, so we're going to have statements that say, okay, if something is true, then proceed with this part of the code, otherwise do something else. And these operators are essential when it comes to that. Now, these statements can also be combined logically. So we have statements like x is less than y, but maybe we have something like uh, in z is 50, y is still 20 and x is 10. And now I don't want to just check if x is less than y, I also want to make sure that y is less than z. Now in order to do that, what I have to do is I have to use logical operators, those are not the same as bitwise operators, because bitwise operators uh, operate on the individual bits, whereas logical operators uh, combine Boolean values into a larger statement. So for example, if I say x is less than y, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to need parentheses here, but I'm going to just include them uh, for safety. So if x is less than y, and and in this case, I use two and symbols, because this is the logical and if I just use one, it's a bitwise and. Um, so if x is less than y, and if 
y is less than z, then this is going to be a one. So this statement here is only going to be one. Uh, I think I have some black right now. Oh, there you go. This statement is only going to be one. If and I think we need some additional parentheses here to make this acceptable. Doesn't this work? Ah, I forgot a semicolon. Let's see if it works now. Uh, so this whole statement here is only going to be true if left and right is true. So this and symbol here, this logical and means that both sides have to be true in order for the whole statement to be true. So if both return one individually, the whole thing is going to be one. We can see how this works, I can compile this and in this case, it's obviously true. Now, if I change the value of z to 20, for example, what happens now is this statement here is true because x is less than y. But this statement is no longer true because y is not less than z, it's equal to z. And because of that, we have one and zero and one and zero results in zero because both uh, sides need to be one for the whole thing to return one. And this means that now I get zero. Now I can change this here to another operator, which is the logical or in this case, a logical or is uh, two times the pipe symbol. So this straight line here. Um, and this means that one of the two sides or both sides have to be one. So in this case, it will fire one because at least the left side is one. So at least x is less than y even though y is not less than z, one side is enough. So this logical operator uh, says at least one has to be true. Now if both, uh, if both are true, I can also change this again to 50. Then we're going to see it's still one. So it's not an exclusive or it's a basic or so one one of them or both of them doesn't matter. Uh, but if both statements are false, so if I have 50, 20 and 10, then of course, this operator is also zero. Um, and finally, we also have the negation. So negation is basically just the exclamation mark, basically turning it around into the opposite. So if I have not one, it's zero. If I have not zero, it's one. So for example, if I have the statement, um, x is less than y, and I add in front of it, a uh, an exclamation mark, what you see here is that in this case, x is not less than y. So this is uh, zero, but not zero is one. So if I provided that I save this, if I compile this now and run this, you're going to see that the statement returns one, even though this part here is wrong, or precisely because this part is wrong. Um, yeah, so that's it for the different categories. I think we have all of them. Let me just check here. Um, again, the bitwise operators, we're going to mention them quickly or briefly. Uh, now, maybe a couple of operators that we should talk about. Uh, they're not really operators, or they're a special category of operators, we're going to talk about the pointer, uh, the, the, the reference operators. So when we have a variable, and we want to know the memory address, we're going to use this and symbol as well, which is neither a bitwise or nor is it a logical or uh, it's a pointer addressing operator if you want. So this is one operator, another operator that we're going to use uh, is also the uh, a similar operator for dereferencing a pointer, this is going to be a star, we're going to talk about this as well. And one thing that we can also do, but I think this is also a more advanced operator for later on uh, is the ternary operator. So we can also write if statements using a question mark. But again, I don't want to confuse you. So I just want to mention them here for the sake of completeness. Uh, but we're not going to talk about them. So last but not least, let us quickly mention some of the bitwise operators, we're not really going to talk about all of them. I just want to um, give you the idea what they are about. So basically, as the name already says, they're based on bits. So if I have a number, for example, 23, this number can be represented in binary. So 23 in binary um, is basically written in zeros and ones indicating powers of two. So 23 is 16 plus uh, not eight. So 16 plus four plus two plus one. So in this case it would be one for 16, zero for eight, one for four, uh, one for two and one for one. 
that would be 23, if I'm not mistaken, because then you would have 16 plus 4 is 20, and then plus 2 and 1 is 23. So this is the representation of 23. Now, maybe I have another number, maybe I have something like uh, 20, and 20 would be something like 10000, because, uh, no, that's not exactly true. Uh, 10100. Zero, um, and this would be the representation of 20 in binary. Now, if I use bitwise operators on these two uh, numbers, I would get the bitwise result. So a bitwise end would give me the end result, the logical end result for each position. So 23 and 20 would result in 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Why? Because 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. 1 and 0 is 0. And 1 and 0 is 0 again. So this is the logical end. If I want to get this, and this number, by the way, is again 20. So 23 and 20 is actually 20. Uh, in order to get this, I mean, we can run the experiment here quickly. Uh, what I have to do is I have to say int a, or actually I don't have to use variables. So let's just go ahead and say print f percent d backslash n, and then just 23 and 20. And then I can delete all this here. And you can see that 20 is the result for the reason that I just explained. And the same goes with the or. You just take the individual bits and you apply a logical operation on them. Now, we don't just have something like or, xor, and uh, or, and, uh, or, xor, and and. We also have uh, something like shifting, which is actually something that I used in a project for a logarithmic search. But essentially what shifting does is if you have, for example, the number, let's take 20 again, 10100, zero, 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 this is 20. If you shift it to the right, what happens is that, um, maybe let, let's add this as a comment here. If you shift this to the right, this would basically mean that you shift the zero, the last zero into the nirvana. So this would be 1010 zero, zero, instead of 20. Um, and if you, shift it to, uh, if you shift it to the left, so if you shift this thing here to the left, what happens is that you add a zero out of nowhere. So you would have something like 10100 zero, 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 and an additional zero that wasn't there before. And what this basically means is this translates into multiplying and dividing by two. So if you shift from this to this, you lose one power of two, which means that from 20, you now get to 10 because this is eight and two. Uh, and from uh, 20 here, you get to 40 because this is 32 and 8. So that's just some background on bitwise operators. We're not going to talk about them in too much detail here. I just want to mention them. Maybe in the future, I'm going to make a separate video about bitwise operator uh, about bitwise operators. I have one on Python operators. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to mention them for the sake of completeness here. So that's it for today's video on operators in C. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.